Hey guys, Hitman89 here, I hope you're doing great. I think we can all agree 2024 hasn't been that good in terms of games, right? That's why today I'm gonna show you the 10 best single player games to revisit right now. I picked the best ones from 2015 until 2021 and before we have a look at the first game, if you wanna get your favorite games for super cheap, Instant Gaming is where it's at. All the games you'll see on today's video are pretty much dirt cheap on Instant Gaming. So instead of waiting for a sale, you could get two recent games or even 10 or more older games for the price of one. Dude, they're selling Mad Max for less than 2 bucks and Prey is only 7 bucks. They also have all the newest games like Black Myth Wukong. All the games come straight from the authorized resellers. Instant Gaming is 100% legit. So use the link in the description and get your favorite game at the best price. Now let's have a look at the first game on my list. I honestly forgot how breathtaking Shadow of the Tomb Raider looks. The graphics are stunning, it's like the game just came out. But what's even more impressive than the visuals is how the game manages to make you hate the main character. I mean this bitch literally started the apocalypse. Throughout the game, every cutscene, I only had one thought. I wish I could play as this big Mexican dude instead. He's so much more likable than Lara. And the fucked up thing is, he's not even Mexican. What is wrong with you? My bad, so Shadow of the Tomb Raider will have you platforming through breathtaking environments, solving puzzles, fighting a bunch of enemies, and mashing buttons to stay alive. Some people don't really like it, but I would take that over an uninteractive cutscene any day of the week. Now the second game you should replay is Mad Max, and this one definitely aged. It kinda looks like a remastered PS3 game now, but it's fun. Real fun. The driving is good, the combat system is simplistic but it gets the job done. Wait, is this sick fuck eating maggots? Oh, he's crazy. That's gotta be why they call him Mad Max. That's the last dad joke you'll hear from me, I promise. I get why a lot of people kept on asking me to play this. You'll be clearing camps, collecting scrap and fighting a bunch of bad guys. Oh and also upgrading your car, cause that's what the whole game is about. The game is really enjoyable. Too bad it's only 30 FPS on PS5, cause the Series X version gets 120 frames per second and the Series S gets 60. So I only recommend you play this on PC or Xbox. And that also applies to the third game on my list. On Prey, you wake up in your apartment and wait what? We're in 2032? And I still don't even have 60k subs? What the fuck? Come on guys, please subscribe for more shitty videos. Prey isn't a horror game, but with these mimics running around and hiding in the environment, you'll get a little jump scare every now and then. 20 minutes in, I started beating the shit out of every object I see, just to be safe. You can use this gun to freeze enemies or to make your own staircases. And that's not all, cause once you get the psychoscope, you'll be able to scan aliens to get their powers. If you're looking for an immersive sim, praise your game. Next we have Immortals Phoenix Ryzen. And I know the shitty name and the Fortnite graphics put off a lot of people back when the game came out, but Immortals can be pretty funny, especially if you're into Greek mythology. Seriously, the Ryzen is generally good. My favorite castle. You chained me to this rock and fed my liver to an eagle out of love. And these guys will narrate everything you do. I don't know about you, but I think good physics make any game more enjoyable. Here, you can chop down trees, pick them up and throw them at your enemies, and you can do the same thing with rocks or just use them to solve puzzles. When you're walking around exploring the map, you'll come across some wild animals. You can tame them and turn them into a mount you can summon whenever you need. It's basically Breath of the Wild with Greek mythology, and the result is... Very enjoyable actually, shame we won't be getting a sequel. Speaking of sequels, since Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 got delayed until 2025, if you have a decent PC, you should definitely play the first game again. Cause in my case, back when this game came out, my old ass PC couldn't handle it properly, so I played it at a shitty frame rate and barely acceptable graphics. But earlier this year, I started a new playthrough on my new PC, and no matter how goofy the animations are, this is still one of my favorite RPGs ever. If you took Skyrim and made it historically accurate and super realistic, you would get Kingdom Come Deliverance. I don't know if you noticed, but for some reason, I've only recorded clips of me practicing my aim with the bow and arrow on these poor villagers, so that's all you're gonna see. Moving on to the sixth game you should revisit, I feel like the main reason why Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy didn't do well is cause they didn't get the actor's likeness. I really don't care about that, I even played the game before watching the movie cause I'm not into all that superhero shit. But I love the soundtrack and I think if you're an old fuck like me, you'll love it too. 
The writing is excellent. I laughed my ass off many times while playing this. Quill nearly got himself eaten by a blob or something. Should've heard him squeal. You must fight with dignity, Peter Quill. Or at least die with it. Not funny. Throughout the game, you'll be given some options to choose from, and here, your choices do matter. I even loaded a save and picked a different option just to see what would happen, and I ended up playing a completely different level. That's dope! As you can see, apart from shooting enemies with your pistols, you can use melee attacks, it gets repetitive after a while, but the story is good with some super likable characters, and in my opinion, that's what makes it worth playing. With Stalker 2 getting delayed every couple of months, I think now is the perfect time to revisit Metro Exodus, especially if you haven't played it since launch, cause it received plenty of updates, including a ray tracing update that makes the game look brighter, but better, I guess. No, but seriously, I really like the little details that make the game even more immersive, like wiping your mask and pumping your flashlight and your pressure-based weapons. I don't like how the dialogue is handled though, not a big fan of the whole sitting me down and talking at me for 10 minutes thing that Metro loves to do. The open world segments are a breath of fresh air though, and by fresh, I mean you better keep your mask on cause it's radioactive as fuck. I don't know about you, but my playstyle in Metro is a little something like this. I do my best to play in a stealthy way, until some piece of shit sees me and then I have to go guns blazing and hope I have enough ammo to kill everyone. And most of the time, I don't, so I have to run around looting corpses mid fight. Moving on to the 8th game, the next gen update is already more than enough reason to replay The Witcher 3. But if you are on PC and this is your 69th time replaying it, then you should seriously consider getting a life and playing some other games. No, you should try this character customization mod that lets you change Geralt's appearance or just replace him with a sorceress and have a completely different game. With the release of the Fallout show earlier this year, Fallout 4 received the next gen update. And by next gen, I mean we now have higher resolution textures. You know how outdated Bethesda games look. Anyway, this game has a settlement building and management part, but it can be completely ignored if that's not your thing. Plus, the dumbass people at your settlement will constantly ask for your help. Personally, I loved wandering around and getting ambushed by a bunch of mutants. The gunplay is decent, but I prefer using the VODs and spamming one limb until it blows up. New Vegas will always be my favorite Fallout game, but at least, when you're done playing this one, you could install Fallout London for free and play a completely different game. It's a huge mod, so it's only on PC. Last, but certainly not least, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one of my favorite games ever. It's got a beautiful world, a decent combat system with a lot of techniques to unlock, ship battles, and a lot of freedom. I love luring enemies to towers and other high places just so I can spot and kick them the second they're done climbing. The only bad thing about this game is that it takes an eternity to beat and Red Dead Redemption 2 came out 3 weeks later, so everyone forgot about Odyssey. Speaking of which, the only reason Red Dead Redemption 2 isn't on this list is cause I think everybody replayed it a bunch of times already and it didn't get an FPS boost or a next gen update. So that's gonna be it for the best single player games to revisit right now. If you don't like any of these games, games and you want some more recent ones, check out the video I made last month with the best single player games of the first half of 2024. You'll find it in the description and also on the end screen in a few seconds. Next we'll have the best free to play games of 2024 so don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel, a thumbs up would also be dope. Oh and if you want to get a bunch of games for cheap, the link is in the description so go for it. It's been Hitman89, see you guys very soon. Get to the top, yeah, you must be rare Got a bike, hey